last one. And, and let's make it interesting, okay? We're gonna go at this, we're gonna go at this really fast, really interesting. And before I even start this video, I've got, I've got some stuff popping up, right? My Gunnersville series is about to pop up. A TV show deal is about to pop up. It's like a little weird. I don't think anyone's ever done this on YouTube. Is done what I'm about to do. It starts next. Then I got a video in there and I've got most of the footage. It was the first day, the first time I ever took a GoPro out on the water, I captured this. It was the, it's, it's probably one of the coolest videos I've ever had. And it basically started the whole YouTube deal because that footage, I started realizing how much GoPro stuff was pretty cool and what I wanted to do. And this is the stuff I really wanted to capture because I don't think people would believe me. But that's coming out before the Gunnersville. So anyways, stay tuned for that stuff. Back to the video. I wasn't gonna do the list last one because I'm ready. I'm so ready to do this fishing thing. I've got I've got them all ready to go, like lined up. I, I think I might have literally like the next two to three months lined up. All fishing. There might be like, and there might be like one or two cool, really interesting videos in there. Like I promise you, you're like they're gonna be good ones. But like almost all fishing from here on out. Now, the deal is this. I had to do this last one. I had to because I actually had some guys talk about the whole tournament thing, right? We're gonna get on this like the, the the tournaments and like is that hurting everything? Okay. Everyone's been pretty good in the comments. Everyone's been kind of like lately, like kind of understanding everything. And that that like you can make a statement. They're not like bringing up like one crazy example to define all the fishing, right? So people have been good about that. The one thing I'll say about tournament fishing is this. This is what we're gonna get into. It's like how much it's hurting it, right? How much is it hurting our legs? Now, we will all agree, especially as tournament fishermen, right? That that tournaments don't help a leg. We'll all agree upon that. We're never saying that it's not hurting a leg, but is it like hurting, hurting it, right? It's like the whole tree example, right? It's not, it's not helping it, but is it really hurting it? This is probably, if you stay around, stay around for this right here. This will make you think. It's kind of like the whole, you know, like I, lo I love the whole Sean's example of a bass. All it has to do to maintain is just, you know, produce two offspring. Like two bass, all they have to do in their entire life is to produce two more bass and that maintains a lake, right? That's if no one's catching them and stuff like that. But the, you, guys, get past that and just think about some things, right? Just think about what he was actually saying and you know, if you got a hundred fish, two die, as long as it produces two more, there's still a hundred, right? That's where this comes involved. This is, I love this right here. This is going to be good. So, does tournament fishing really hurt a leg? So you got tournament fishermen, right? Who do everything in their power to keep fish alive. Like tournament fishermen are probably the best people out there. Well, I don't know if I want to say best. They're one of the best as a group, as a whole, as a group. I would say most tournament fishermen never keep fish, release everything, do everything in their power to keep fish alive for not only in the tournament, but because they want to do good in tournaments in the future, they want to protect our resources. So tournament fishermen in large compared to just the recreational guy, you're going to, you're going to meet very few tournament fishermen that ever keep a fish ever okay so in large that's a good group like that's a that's a group I'm a I'm proud to be a part of we also try our very best to keep fish alive in tournaments now you could say is it because you want don't want a dead fish penalty and stuff like that maybe right or is it because we really care about the bass either way it's still a good thing right because it, it, it's it's taught us how to keep fish alive, right? In our boat, uh, we always are looking at ice stuff, fizzing things, all kinds of different stuff to keep fish alive for tournaments. Now, now, I can only attest to tournament fishermen. I can't always attest to the guys running the tournament. I would say most of them, I mean, the majority of, of tournament organizations are doing everything possible to keep fish alive. 
and doing things. I mean, and if not, fishermen and other things have come down on them saying, hey, y'all got to do a better job. You know, no one wants to go down to the sea at the boat ramp to see a bunch of dead fish. Okay. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Now, why did I bring this bad boy in here? Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. And I'm going to point out some things that are, that are pretty crazy. Not only does this, everyone talks about the mortality rate of bass. Okay. And fish kills and all these other things about, oh man, I hope this doesn't lead down another turn, uh, another video. But a lot of people say, hey, you know, they, the fish die after, after they've been released from tournaments. And I like how like, no one really knows. Like it's almost impossible to know that, right? And so I'm not going to speak on that because that's a, that's impossible to know. And I'm going to tell you why. Although people love to throw it out there, but they have no clue. They really don't. They might take someone's word for it, right? But I don't just take someone's word for it, right? I mean, I, I don't know. I have no clue. And then you'll probably never know this. And here's why. This will explain why. The second argument I've always had with fish kills and fish dying, and why I've, I'm, I, fish kills happen a lot, a whole bunch. Um, I, I can't explain all of them. I won't even try to, but it's, we've always talked about it within the lakes we fish a lot, that we see classes of fish not being there, or I, I saw Rayburn go, been through two of them. Uh, one of them really, really, really bad. And it was uh, when the lake got super, super, super low. And I told everyone, they're, they're gone. And it's funny because the number one thing people say when, when I might say, hey, there's a fish kill or there's, and they're like, well, I don't see any fish. What well, what do you mean you don't see any fish? People think that fish, what, just all die and float up to the surface? Okay. Watch. Get ready for this little illustration about of what's about to happen. Okay, here you go. Let's just say we have a lake. We're going to keep this really small, okay? So you've got your lake. And we all can say we're going to have 100,000. We're going to have 100,000 bass in that lake. Now, let's just say that that, you know, average fish lives 10 years, okay? Now, we're not gonna break that up and, uh, and divide that by 10. I mean, if we would, right, we'd have 10,000 a piece, right? But there's obviously gonna be a lot more small ones than large ones, right? It, there should be, it, it should be like a pyramid, you know, let's see, right? Of your larger fish are here and it goes down like this. We'd all agree on that and so on and so on, right? Where the mo majority of your fish are down here, the smaller ones, and, and up here at the top pyramid, that's going to be your larger bass, right? There's going to be few of them um, for mort mortality rate, all kinds of different things. But we're not going to get into that. We need to know that, right? But that's two different arguments. That's an argument of, of creating a big bass fishery, right? Something like a lake fork that's trying to produce nothing but big fish, as opposed to just a numbers game, okay? So, so there are 365 days in the year. We would all agree that, let, let's say, if, if, if they need to maintain 100,000 fish just to maintain, and this is a small number, guys, 100,000, I mean, what, really, I'd like to use a million, but I'm just going to use 100,000 for like even like a small lake. So it doesn't really matter. That spring and spring lasts for a couple months of like some, some spawn earlier than others, but let's just say to keep this going, we need, oh, I don't know. Probably only, let's just keep it simple, 10,000 10, fish, babies, fry, need to live, right? Every year. Because every year in this 10 years, right? If a bass lives to be 10 years, one, right? That, that Those 10-year-old those bass, they're going to die, okay? Now, if those 10-year-old bass are going to die every year, Right, and I know there's not ten thousand of them, but let's just say that there there was to keep the the lake maintaining. That means 
every year, if there's 10,000 born every year, Ten thousand die every year. Now, maybe you're saying, "Well, that's the small ones," or you know, they're getting eaten. Whatever it is, ten thousand fish die every year. Now, how many of those fish do you think die of old age every year? Quite a few. That's like saying that. Let's just take people for example. There, yes, for all the babies being born every year. At the same rate, there's someone dying every year. And a lot of it is because of old age, right? Old age is what's killing a lot of people. It's just old. Natural causes. So let's just say, I don't know, half of those, 5,000, right? Are dying every year because of old age, right? Let's do the math. 5,000. Get my calculator because I don't feel like doing that right now, right? 5,000 divided by 365 days. That means 13 fish die every day. 13. 13 fish on a lake, that's on a minimum, are dying every day. Probably of old age. Every day. I, now, this number, this 100,000, is extremely small. That is a small number. This is a small lake, right? Say we did make it a million, a million fish in a lake. That's pretty, like Rayburn, Rayburn might be 10 million. It's but I mean, let's just say most lakes, probably at least a, a decent sized lake, have a million bass in it, okay? 13 times 10, we can do that, right? Like say, okay, so there's a million, right? So now we got 130, 130 fish dying every day if there's a million bass in the lake, 130. So just say, why do I, so why do I bring all that up? That is a lot of fish. Like the lake would be full of just floating dead fish everywhere. But yeah, how many times do y'all see a dead fish? Almost never. You don't see, you don't see this. But that's how many fish are dying every every day, every day. So if you actually did go down there to a tournament and you might have seen 30 or 40 fish that died that day because the tournament did bad or because of whatever, yeah, it really didn't do much to the overall effect of that of that lake. I, it's still crazy to think that there's 130 fish dying every day. I think that's a low end. I think that's a low number, personally, because I only took 5,000 of that. I didn't even take the full 10. It could be closer to 200. That's if a million fish are in a lake. I'm telling you, there's some of these lakes have way more than a million bass in there. And so we're having that many die of old age, of being sick, of whatever it might be, that's going on daily, daily. So when we see something like a tournament that might have, might be in a bad time of the year and they did kill them, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that's helping. I've always said that. That's not helping. But is it really affecting the lake when that many are dying every day anyways just because of natural causes? That, that's where that's where I have a problem with some of these things where it's like we're trying to get mad at tournament fishermen and, and guys bass fishing and put them on the carpet or release them. Man, there's things going on constantly that affect our bass that aren't really anything to do with us. I'm just saying. We're not, we're not always helping, but in the scheme of things, man, you know, like, like that guy said, I'm not even going to bring it up, but it's just a fart in the wind really is it's not doing much i don't know this one this one might get just think about this for a while just think about it. i think about this all the time that's why it's like that if you really want to think about the numbers if you wanted to get really simplistic right if you just took this hundred thousand and took 10 years right then that means every every year 
you know, 10,000 new, new fish need to be born, 10,000 fish died every year. Like that's what, that's what Sean was talking about. That's what Sean was talking about when he said, if you have t the two fish deal, right? If y'all don't know, he said two bass, right? Sean said two bass. One here and one here. They have to produce two fish in their lifetime. That's all they have to do. These two bass have to produce two more to maintain a lake. Two bass over the over their lifetime, right? Over their lifetime, all they have to do is produce two more. Because once those die, guess what? There's still two more. And that was the whole deal. If there's a hundred thousand fish in a lake. So to maintain this 100,000, right? We just need 10,000 born every year. But if 10,000 are born every year, that means 10,000 of them die every year. This number, 10,000, 10,000 die every year. We still got 100,000. I mean, I'm not saying 10, 10,000 fish dying every year seems like a lot, guys, when you think about it, doesn't it? But in reality, it's not that big of a deal. Just saying. Oh, and get ready. We got some weird kind of crazy footage on some TV shows popping up. That's going to be a pretty cool series. The next video after this. So, guys, stay tuned for that. And then my Gunnersville series is coming up. Get ready for that. See y'all.